And so I, I planned on sharing about like my experience creating an emergent experimental and fluid space, but I, I feel like I was guided to share something else, which is how, where water school emerged from and um, what we did the first year and what's happening right now. Going to in 2021, I started water school, um, and I, I had the, the way it started is I had a chance to participate in a group artist residency called Tending the Edge, which was a collaboration between two New York City-based organizations called Works on Water and Culture Push, and New York City's Department of City Planning. And artists were asked to think about how people living in the city could tend to the 520 miles of shoreline that make up the city. And also comment on um, the New York City Comprehensive Waterfront Plan, which is a document that outlines how the waterfronts can be equitable, resilient, and healthy. And for some reason, I was really interested in researching wetlands in the city. And so my project was called Yucca, Learning From and With Wetlands. I, I want to show the website if that's possible. I think that's, let's see. Just kind of bear with me for a second. Because I think it, I really want to show the website. So this is the project website. If you see at the top, it says 2021, Tending the Edge. And then there's a subtitle that says, Tending the Edge, Caring for the New York City Coastline and its Communities Now and, and in the Future. And it goes on to describe this initiative. And then you'll see all the different projects that people worked on, whether it was one person or it was a, a pair of people. For example, you'll see Between the Sea and the Shore, Storytelling in Far Rockaway, um, Multi-Species Wisdom Along the Water's Edge, there's my project, Learning from Wetlands. Then there's Sacred Waters, Jamaica Bay, and Honor Indigenous Land, Water, and Treaties, a land acknowledgement campaign. campaign. Um, and so then there's another person's project who I'm not sure why it's not on that website, but there's an artist named Zoe Hart, um, who along with another artist named Moira Williams, they talk a lot about waterfront access for people with disabilities. And I just really appreciate their work and wanna share it whenever I'm in a group space. And so here's Zoe's waterfront access mapping project. I could share the links in, in the chat. So I just wanted to share what other people are working on in this type of group artist res residency. Hopefully my, my uh, screen changes aren't giving you a headache. <laughs> so what was happening before Tending the Edge? In 2020, during the height of the pandemic, I, I was living in Queens and I moved to upstate New York to stay with my friend for a month. And she had this gorgeous swamp in her backyard. And I had such a wonderful time living near the swamp, which I think really inspired my focus on wetlands for tending the edge. And so ever since waking up to the swamp every day for a month in 2020, wetlands have come into my life more and more. And wetlands, which I always have to remind myself, are described as you know areas of land that are periodically or constantly covered with water. Wetlands can either be tidal, meaning they contain seawater that fluctuates with tides, or non-tidal, meaning water presence is not linked to tides. And the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration rec recognizes five types of wetlands, ocean, estuary, river, lake, and marsh. That's from the Ocean Conservancy, but I'm interested in other ways of describing wetlands. Um, and it's really cool to see all the different wetlands that exist. There's swamps, there's salt and freshwater marshes, mangroves, fins, bogs, forest swamps with vernal pools. 
And so water school came out of researching wetlands, which um, many have been destroyed um, across the, the country in the US. And they continue to be disregarded even when there is research and, and full evidence that wetland ecosystems are so vital. And water school came out of inquiry questioning around what are the perceptions and stories of wetlands and how can we restory places like swamps, which tend to be viewed as irritating and disease filled and they're taking up space and they're not useful. Um, a, a lot of times it's like this tension between wetlands and, and agriculture. I have an agriculture background, so this is also another reason why I'm interested. Um, and so wetlands are so beautiful and they do, they, they give so much to us like the ocean. And I can't really outline now like what they they do um because my mind is filled with a lot of things right now but I do encourage people to do your own wetland research because wetlands uh seem to be everywhere um so let me see I just want to share some of my wetland experiences so this is the swamp that I lived near in 2020 Bundy Hill Swamp I was happy to see there are blueberries growing there this is um, the Graniteville Forest Swamp in Staten Island, um, where I grew up. This is Jamaica Bay Wildlife Refuge in Queens, New York. And actually, between these two wetlands, I got to see like what are the what are the lives of wetlands? Because for the Graniteville Forest Swamp, there was a lot of community struggle around this wetland to survive and thrive. And the community tried so hard to save it, but unfortunately there's a, a 99 year lease for um, a store to be built on this wetland. Um, whereas for Jamaica Bay Wildlife Refuge, this wetland, which has other environments like upland forests and the bay and beaches, it, it, it has so many resources and protective measures. So you get to really see like, wow, their, their lives are just so different, you know? Um, and there's more context around both of these situations. And as a part of my research, I had a chance to collaborate with an artist named Marie Lorenz, who has this cool project called Tide and Current Taxi. And we paddled out to White Island in Jamaica Bay to go look at the, the marshes, um, which was pretty cool. I'm definitely a saltwater person, <laughs> getting used to being in an arid de desert environment right now. One more minute, Simone. Okay. So that went by really fast. Um, I just wanted to show you my wetland experiences. And I guess to end this, because I have so much more to say, um, and I don't want to go back and forth between my camera and my phone, but this is where water school emerged from. It emerged from the, the life of wetlands and the, the struggle of wetlands and what it is to, to work with story around different places and ecosystems. And so I, I feel like as water school continues to grow, I really wanna keep this connection to wetlands um, and thinking about how we perceive different ecosystems, especially like swamps. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That went by so fast. Um...